Today is September the 19th, 2020. My name is Anthony Villanueva. I am interviewing Anthony Garcia for the Latino Oral History Project and Voices of a Pandemic Project at Central, at the Center for Latino and Latin, Latin Studies, uh, uh, American Studies at Northern Illinois University. This project is in partnership with Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything uh, that you wish uh, to speak about, please bring it up. If there's anything that you do not want to speak about, just let me know and we will honor your wishes. Because we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record your consent. So I'll be asking you six questions. Please say yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree to each one, each one, each one of the questions. Do you give the Center for Latino and Latin American Studies consent to archive your interview and your materials at the Northern Illinois University Libraries? Yes, I agree. Do you grant Northern Illinois University Libraries rights, titles, interests, copyrights over the interview and any material you may provide? Yes, I agree. Do you agree to allow Northern Illinois Universities to post, post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Uh, yes, I agree. Do you grant the Center for Latino and Latin American Studies consent to share your interview and your materials with Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History Mini Project, which will be posted uh, the interview on the internet. Yes, I agree. Do you give, do you wish for us to share the rest of your pre-interview uh, for public file available to researchers at the Benson and NIU libraries? Uh, yes, I agree. And on occasion, the Center for Latino and Latin American Studies and Voices receive requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We will only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone number or your email with journalists? Uh, yes, I agree. Okay. Well, good afternoon, Anthony. And what I'd like to ask uh, first is to tell me a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> um, so I was born in Texas. Um, family's from Mexico, both parents. Um, lived in Texas for about a decade, moved up here to Iowa, uh, bounced around between a small town called Columbus Junction, Iowa, and Des Moines for a couple of years. Eventually, I graduated from Columbus um, here in Iowa, and uh, I graduated, decided to go to the University of Iowa. I had uh, dreams of becoming a doctor, but it wasn't really for me. I didn't like the chemistry. I didn't really like the atmosphere, and I wasn't sure if I really wanted to do it. I tried some uh, nursing classes along the way there, and um, I decided to do a nursing program uh, at uh, Indian Hills in Ottumwa, Iowa. It was a two-year program, so I thought it would be the best option for me. Um, it's, you know, quick, right to the point. It's, you know, cheaper, and it guarantees me a job. So that's what I did. Um, and uh, since then, I graduated, uh, met my requirements, took my board exams, and um, I became a nurse. And I'm currently working at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. Um, I work on to JCP, uh, which is uh, ears, nose, and throat, otolaryngology floor. Um, and it also takes care of other specialty uh, surgeries. And so, yeah. So how far away from uh, your, your residence is your job? I would say it's about 10 miles, not very far. And the location where you live, is it a single residence or is it a multi-dwelling? Uh, I'd say multi-growing. Multi-dwelling. In other words, um, the reason I ask you that is because I'm trying to find out the density of where you live in terms of your closeness to other people. <clears throat> yeah. How would you describe it? I would definitely say it's multi-growing. Uh, 
Iowa City, like in the last couple of years, has just been – well, I live in Coralville, but Iowa City and Coralville are together. Um, and it's just been expanding in the last decade. I mean, buildings are, are coming up, and there's a lot of housing being developed, a lot of, uh, I guess, like businesses. So, yeah, definitely growing. And when did you first become aware of – uh the covid virus so the i remember the first time i actually started paying attention i should say would be january january december so december how did, 2019. how did you come to how, how did you come to learn about it uh i was on social media and i was seeing um posts about the chinese government um handling the situation in wuhan mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. This was before it escalated, and we found out, you know, how bad it was. But, and and when did it? When did you start to? Did you immediately start to take it seriously, or did you think that it was a passing thing? I thought it would be a passing, passing thing for the first, I don't know, for the first two months of it. I would say. So when it first started happening, I thought it was just passing. And you were working at this time. Yes. How did uh, the hospital uh, handle the, the news of this new virus? At first, um, so I'd say things really started kicking off at the hospital in March. Um, you know, there was some uh, uh, buzz going around about COVID um, in the months of January and February. It wasn't, you know, a very big issue in the United States at the time. And so the hospital wasn't, you know, implementing any precautions you know it wasn't necessary right. uh, and so when march hit uh they really they really got it together and they uh, kind of set out a plan at that time and uh what changes did you see uh at the hospital so at the beginning um when the infection rate started uh rising they started restricting visitors um they made it mandatory for us to wear masks and helmets um it wasn't this wasn't very sudden though since the cdc was changing their guidelines at the time uh, we weren't really sure what was the most accurate thing as you know new information was coming out so for a while um for like january and february we weren't wearing masks and i believe it wasn't until midway march that we we weren't required to wear masks at work either. Yeah. At what point did it become mandatory? If I remember correctly, it was either halfway through March and April. So okay. somewhere in between then, where it really became mandatory. I mean, you had to have your mask on at all times, mm -hmm. uh, along with the face shield as well, because we were finding that the uh, masks weren't as effective as the face shield. So we use both now. Uh, we have to have them on at all places, um, even when entering the hospital and exiting. Good. Um, and at the hospital, what are your responsibilities? <clears throat> so at the hospital, I'm a registered nurse. So I'm in charge of anywhere between three and four patients a day. Um, depending on, you know, what service, uh, and by service, I mean like what primary team is taking care of them, depending on their condition. Uh, they set out orders for me and I just kind of have to follow them throughout the day. Um, you know, pass medications, do daily cares, um, ambulating the patients, any dressing changes, uh, getting them prepared for procedures, um, you know, things of that nature. And your working hours are? I work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you, you interact with the patients uh, hands-on? Correct. Have you been tested for COVID? I have not. Have any of your uh, partners, uh, co-workers at work been tested for COVID? Yes, they have. Is the hospital require COVID testing or is it uh, an employee requesting it? It is a requested, it's requested. 
And have you had any direct contact with COVID patients? Uh, so, in this, in a, yes, we have, um, but it's not intentional. Um, like I said, the guidelines were changing. Um, they have been changing. And so there have been cases where patients um, were sent from, you know, the emergency department or a, a different floor where they were transferred to us and um, they swabbed them for COVID, waiting for results to come back and they come out positive or they come out at risk, you know, they're showing some symptoms. And so we are in contact with these patients. The second we find out about it, we set up our airborne precautions um, and we transfer them to the designated units that we have set up for them. Um, do, does your family live uh, close to where you reside? Uh, my family lives about 40 minutes away from me, so no. And uh, has anybody in your family contracted COVID? Uh, yes, my younger brother. Your younger brother? Yes. How old, how old is he? He is 19 years old. Does he know where he got it from? Um, actually, I, I, uh, he's 20 years old, and we're not sure where he got it from. We think it was from his friend's mother. Because he went over to her house and then she got infected. Does he wear a mask? Or did he wear a mask at the time? Was he wearing a mask? Uh, yes, he did wear. Yeah, he was wearing a mask. Yeah. He still got it. Yep. Do you know if uh, your friend's mother was wearing a mask? That I am not sure. And what was the, how did it manifest itself with your brother? Um, with my brother, he, <clears throat> he had a pretty bad cough, um, some trouble breathing, um, when he would, you know, ambulate, walk around the house, uh, you know, do chores, um, some weakness, fatigue, you know, but that was, I guess, the severity of it. Never came to your house? Uh, no, he never came here. No. Did you, did you go see him? So I haven't been living in Coralville. I moved here in July, so that was in April, March, uh, and so at that time I was living at home, and so we had him quarantine himself in his room. And your parents were okay, both? Oh yes, both of my parents were okay. Is there anybody in your family other than your brother that contracted COVID? Not that I'm aware of, no. Any neighbors? Um, not that no. I'm aware of. Your friend's, your friend's mother, how did, was that a serious case or did it have the same? Um, uh, it was a mild case. She didn't uh, have any, any severe complications. Um, I do have another friend um, whose father uh, did contract COVID and he did. The, the father unfortunately passed away. How long ago was that? About five months ago, five, four months ago. Do you know anything about how he contracted it? Um, so this gentleman was working at a um, meat, meat packing plant in Columbus Junction. Um, and that's where he acquired it. There was an outbreak at the plant and uh, unfortunately he got sick and passed. And he, he, brought, he brought it home? Um, I... I believe so. I'm not sure. No, the reason I ask is uh, I'm, I'm trying to determine whether he passed away at home or was he hospitalized and he passed away in the hospital. He was hospitalized. He passed away in the hospital. So, do you feel safe? Um... I do feel safe. I think at this point, um, if I haven't already contracted the virus, I don't think it would, I would have very severe complications from it, you know. Do you think that you've developed an immunity to uh, the, the exposure that you have had? Uh, hard, hard to tell. I'm not Is sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you ever get the antigen test, uh, <clears throat> drop me an email. Let me know how you made out. I can definitely, right. I can do that, definitely. Uh, do, 
the fact of that you you're bilingual does that help you at work uh yes it does is uh a large population of your patients uh bilingual or uh, speak Mex uh, mexican Spanish? um every now and again we get some spanish-speaking patients uh not very often no okay mm -mm. and how how do you think covid has affected your personal life not your job at work but your personal life um you know i would say it's definitely limited um obviously social gatherings um you know there's a lot less things to do you know you can't go out to the movies uh at a, for a certain time it was difficult you know to go out to the gym and exercise uh, going out to eat um kind of interacting with friends so it, it's had a, a pretty good impact have uh you noticed some or any of those restrictions been uh, eased up uh in terms of uh social socializing outside the home um my own my own personal restrictions are just in the state no 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 when you go out do you see more people out do you see more people going to restaurants or be at uh, uh, mm -hmm. bars or do they yeah. wear masks do they wear masks do they not wear masks so um i see a mix i see a lot of the younger people wearing masks not all of them um, but a majority of them do. A lot of the older people also wearing masks, but you still have your handful that just don't want to follow the rules and don't believe in it, you know, doing what they'd like. Definitely a lot of people at restaurants and bars, so. Has anybody treated you differently when they learn that you work as a nurse in a hospital? Um, yeah, I hope not. Uh, I, I I hope not. But yeah, I I, I think so. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, what I mean, you know, like like when they learn you're a nurse, like they take they take They're one like, step. Oh. Yeah, they, one step back, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely experienced that. Um, do you remember any any specific occasion? <sighs> Usually, just interacting with friends, meeting new people. Um, you know, my friends, my friend, it's my friend who always says it. He's like, oh, my friend's a nurse. I don't like saying it because people like to do that. Exactly. And I'm just right. like, it's a job. I'm a person like everyone else. You know, we all do our jobs. And how do your coworkers feel? Do they, are you, are, are your coworkers um, fearful of uh, con being contaminated? Um, so on my unit, we have a good mix of, you know, the older nurses and younger nurses. There's a pretty good divide, actually. Um, I'd say between 26 down to, you know, 23. And then there's older people who are in their, you know, 40s, 50s. A lot of the older nurses at first were concerned with it. A lot of the younger people, not very, very worried about it. They still follow their uh, guidelines, though, so that's good. Have you have you heard any of your older co uh, coworkers compare this uh, COVID pandemic with uh, any of the uh, like the swine flu or Ebola? Ebola. Have you heard any of them compare it? I did hear a story about um, Ebola and um, how prepared the hospital was for that. Um, when Ebola, I guess when they had the first case here at the university, they were telling me the, the precautions they took and how they would designate certain, you know, pathways in the hospital just to transport those patients. You know, they, um, they would have people wear these like hazmat suits, if I remember correctly, and they'd have someone standing outside the room reading instructions and telling them how to do everything exactly. So I did hear that comparison, um, you know, to, to COVID. <clears throat> have you have you lost any time from work or lost any income as a result of COVID? I have not lost any time from work uh, from being sick. 
Uh, but there were so in March and April when the restrictions started coming up, they restricted visitors. They were not allowing any visitors whatsoever. Um, they shut down, you know, um, elective surgeries and you know, like plastic surgeries, things like that. Uh, they weren't admitting people or seeing people in the clinics as often as they normally do. They were doing a lot of things uh, online or on the phone. Um, and so that had a financial impact on the hospital. Um, it affected, you know, our dining services, um, the procedures. So uh, that set back, um, set the hospital back, you know, a couple of, I don't know how much money, honestly, but um, there was a period in time where they were going to do some pay cuts towards us just to kind of help the hospital get that money back. Um, a lot of the staff were very upset with that. and. Um, it turned out they worked a solution and they told us we had two options. Um, the first would be to take two weeks off unpaid um, and we can decide when we can do that. Um, or we can give up a hundred hours of vacation time. Um, if you're full, full time, like myself, I work a hundred percent. And so I chose to do two weeks. So I'm technically being furloughed and I can apply for unemployment like others have on my unit. So I would say, yeah, I mean, it's affected my pay. Oh. All right. Has anyone lost their job at the hospital because they didn't want to take either one of those two options? <clears throat> um, I've heard stories of some of the phlebotomists leaving. Um, they just come around and draw labs or yeah. they get blood work. Um, so I've, I've heard from some of them that, you know, they quit, they were concerned with, um, you know, catching this disease or catching the virus and uh, not being able to care for their children at home. And so they just took some time off and they quit. Um, as far as, you know, people that I directly work with on my unit, um, no, I don't think I have, no. Is uh, getting back to your mother and father. Um, do you have family in, Me in Mexico? Yes, I do. Has COVID affected their lives? Not that I've heard of, no. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk to me about? Um. In regards to just how everything's been handled in the hospital, yeah. or um, let's say uh, the state of Iowa, are you are you satisfied that the state of Iowa has done everything it can to assist no. the residents? I would not say they've done no, <laughs> no. They're I'm not satisfied with them at all. Um, I think our governor Kim Reynolds is handled this very poorly. Um, you know, not mandating a mask uh, in, you know, the state, you know, saying we're very spread out. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of rural towns, which is very true. Um, but, you know, a week or two ago, Iowa City was number one per capita of COVID cases. And, you know, they kind of took it like they didn't care. Um, a lot of the people here were concerned. They've been, you know, protesting and, you know, uh, writing letters and telling the governor that we need assistance, we need help, and she's just kind of been delayed and dragging her feet. Uh, my personal opinion is, you know, she's just trying to pander to the president. Um, there was a handful of states, you know, who were not uh, going on lockdowns, and Iowa was one of those states. Um, and, so, you know, that's what I think. Um, but yeah, I don't think they've done enough to help us. Uh, definitely, they're pushing right now to open schools up, you know, even though cases are rising. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people want their kids to be online and they're not, uh, they're not trying to help the people out. And what, what is your opinion of the federal response? Uh, the federal response, I think they're trying, but they're a mess. I think it's a competition right now of, you know, who's right and who's wrong. And no one wants to say they're wrong. You know, I think it's the president just trying to keep his circus going. 
Um, Cause yeah, it's been very messy. And a lot of us have been upset at work with the guidelines saying, don't wear a mask, wear a mask. It helps. It doesn't help, you know, going back and forth. Um, of course it's, it doesn't look very professional or on our, on our end either or the hospitals. Um, we were going based off of the CDC guidelines for a while and all that, you know, changing and updating information. Um, we would get several emails from our CEO, you know, daily, just updating us on, Hey, this is the new policy. This is what we're going to be implementing. This is how we're going to do things. The next day it would change and the next day it would change. So it was just constant back and forth. Um, so definitely very messy from the, from the federal side of it. Um, yeah. What do you, what do you foresee? Do you have any opinions as how this is going to progress or do you think that this is going to be the new normal? Um, well, I certainly hope it's not the new normal. I have to wear a helmet and a mask at work for 12 hours a day. So I'd really like to not do that anymore. It's been months. Um, I don't see this disappearing as some people would like it to. I would hope it did, but I don't think, you know, it's, it's going to kill off, uh, a larger amount of the population. I think a lot of people have been exposed to this virus, uh, unknowingly. I feel like a lot of people have had this, um, virus and, you know, were asymptomatic and they did okay, you know? So I think it, it'll probably be another year or so until this fully goes away and we have it better controlled. My battery's going to die. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, That's fine. okay. Uh, so that will be all. I want to thank you for your time.